and we're back. So I think what we're going to do is do the neurons and then look at things a little bit and then uh, we'll see how long that takes. <laughs> and uh, the conclusion might um, have to be in a separate episode just to give me some digestion time. I'm as slow as a carnivorous plant. That's a lot of shit. Okay. Uh, deadly plants stolen. Uh, they were stolen by these guys. So, the reason we had difficulty before, or I had, uh, we had the, the difficulty of making l any logic out of the theft and the murder is because they happened in the wrong chronological order, in a sense. Um, of uh, sort of well now it makes sense in a way where um, the plants were they were put into right so they were put into the colonial thingy putting colonial colonial garden but it, it was a exhibition so that's why they were missing from the picture. Let me just look at that picture again. Uh, what is this? Cleaning wise. Right, so. It's not this picture. List of the plants. Where was the photograph of the... The photograph of the plants. I feel like they're not here, for sure. Because we're already past that. Unless these are... No, they may be in a different order. What was that? So, I don't think, these don't involve any of the pictures. I wish they would be held in, like, here. I don't remember at all where I saw the photograph. Where would a photograph like that be? In the, uh... Because I'm, I'm hoping it's not in the archives. Because if it is, then I won't be able to see it again without looking at the past episodes or Googling the picture. Googling it is dangerous. I, I sort of remember it being... Like, I, don't, I have no idea where it is, but I sort of think that it was in the in Hamish's area, private area, because this one definitely is not it. Uh, but I remember it being somewhere else though, like completely somewhere else. I don't know why. But I need to see that picture. Oh, while we're here. <laughs> 320, yeah. Because this could be also be faked. This recording seems very long. It is unnecessary to listen to all of it. Miss White was in the laboratory, as she told us. In the laboratoire. So, right. 
that would leave the Sun and Hamish possibly so <clears throat> I would imagine because the recording's long, so she was recording here, and then eventually there's commotion, and then they go out. So that proves that she wasn't carrying it around anywhere. Now there could be another um, another phonograph, <laughs> and then you could play her voice, but you need to spin it to record it. I don't know, but I I I, I guess I have to believe that she was here. Uh, and I, I really don't see any sort of reasonable way of, of faking that. So, now that that's out of the way, I totally forgot about it. Um, and I forgot what we're looking for. We're looking for the photograph of the event. There it is. The plants are there. That's the spiky plant on the bottom right. Or, I mean, the ED plant on the bottom right. Then that's the uh, gaseous plant on the top. So, the picture, I was thinking if they're missing from this picture, that would be strange. So, I guess that settles it. Um, I'll still go look at the fire, but clearly the plants, the deadly plants, am I completely wrong here? The deadly plants were destroyed in the fly fire here uh, in the end and the whole place was cleaned up. Now, them working together, the Sun and Hamish working together doesn't make sense, at least superficially. There was only one gas mask. The plants were set alight fairly recently. And the picture frame as well. What is the picture of? I mean, people have burn pits, and I, w I would imagine they had them back in the day, like, because they, there was no, um, there was no real understanding of, well, I guess it was an understanding of pollution, but they didn't really start caring about it. Nobody, nobody important started caring about it until they had to. So, all right, let's look at the neurons now. I, th I think... I would imagine we're, we're sort of done here. I can't recall anything. Um, the only one who, so, who sort of answered clearly to the cleaning up thing was M Mrs. White. Uh, her motive to do anything bad also um, has not yes, yet been uh, let out into the world. So Miss White had no reason. He, she had counter reason, anti-motive to do anything, I would imagine. She didn't know she was going to be transferred. The letter hadn't been sent. So, um, they might have arguments and things like that. You know, you don't, when someone's, someone argues with you and things like that, it doesn't mean much if, you know, especially in the workplace, people argue. And if, if, if you're a douchebag, people argue with you all the time. So it's not a big deal most of the time. So, <clears throat> She was the furthest away. She answered clearly to the question of whether she had ever been there. I would imagine that she had, but she maybe not. Um, why did she ask for money for from her parents? They might have had an argument 
So the argument was about paying back, probably, or something. It, it was like about her, um, about her sort of uh, independence or something like that. No, this is Albert. Uh, right. Why doesn't she, why doesn't she need the support? I don't know, but it, the plants are destroyed, so she's not selling them. She didn't even steal them. I don't, I don't think it's possible that she had something to do with the divine uh, loopy people, but maybe not. Probably not. I mean. So let's go back to the ease. Uh, deadly precision. Um, ventilation used, I guess. So that gave another option there. Martin Hamish had the opportunity to stimulate the deadly plants in the colonial collection room. As a biologist, he would have understood the technicality of how to do this. Uh, completely true. Uh, the Divine Syndicate stole all but the deadly plants from the exhibition. The Divine Syndicate stole all plants from the exhibi exhi exhibition, including the deadly species. They could have used them in order to murder Montague Dunn. So... <clears throat> I mean, there's possible. There's possibility that I'm, I'm just being dumb here, but um, they could have stolen all of them and then uh, told that they didn't have the deadly plants and then murdered him, you know, for whatever reason, and then hidden the hidden the um, plants in the back of uh, whatever their the, the little plant room that they had. Um, but I think they stole all but the deadly plants because they were they had already been uh, they were, they were already gone and then they because why are the pots in the fire too so I'll, I'll say this for now but we'll come back to this if we have to and let's look at more of them. Missing deadly plants. Deadly precision. Yeah. So the Divine Syndicate left the plants at Kew Gardens in the order to murder Montague Dunn at later. That someone stole the deadly plants before the Divine Syndicate were able to. Right, because again, the fans. Someone had to operate the fans. To make all this happen, someone wasn't throwing caterpillars around. I don't think, and be in the room. I don't see that happening. Uh, the money that Montague Dunn regularly gave to Miss White far exceeded the needs for of a student. Miss White's family. Disagreement. Margaret White's studies and social situation were completely dependent upon Montague Dunn's wealth. That is true, but we know more than to have that be involved in a sense, I guess. So, White studies. All oh, right, so we're digging her grave in a sense, but the knowledge Miss White acquired at the university might not be enough to guarantee the correct reaction of the deadly plants. Miss White had the biological knowledge to sim stimulate the deadly plants. Very certain. So it's like probably not. 
she was good. And she had done some research in plants like that, but... Um, so Hamish's anger, new director, I don't think. Oh, it does. So it's sort of digging his motive into the situation, maybe. Martin Hamish had a motive. He believed that he and his father's lives had been ruined by Dunn, who had taken the credit for all of their work. Hamish wished to take over the dire directorship of Kew Gardens, but he knew that would not be possible with Dunn still alive. Now that's true, and Dunn also did take all the credit, and I haven't forgotten it yet, but I'll I'll just write it down. I don't think because it's such a big part of his personality, but um, just in case I need it at some point, I forget it. Uh, Martin Hamish could be the killer. He had the opportunity to steal the Divine Syndicate's plants and stimulate them from his workplace directly after he had locked Montague Dunn inside the Colonial Collection Room. Now, this is not true. Well... This is not true, because I was thinking... He, he could do it earlier before getting into his room, sort of, but then again not. Because um, if, he, if he ran um, Effect the Arrest of Martin Hamish. No, wait, what? Okay, so we're going to go back. <clears throat> I feel like there's there's stuff still to be seen. Can I undo this sort of if I these are all for certain. Okay, so I can I can undo it, right? So I'm not gonna go and arrest him just yet because What was I thinking? There's still clues anyway. Oh there's still more clues. Alpha's humiliation so this would be for him. Albert had a motive to kill his father, Montague Dunn. Dunn had thwarted Albert's dream of joining the Royal Navy. By killing his father, Albert could, Albert could have his revenge and eventually succeed in his father's place as the director of uh, Kew Gardens. So... It's not a revenge to sort of ta do something you don't want to do, really, in a sense. Um, but what I was thinking was that he could, uh, kill his father and he wouldn't say that he's now going into the Navy. So Albert could lie about taking, uh, position because it would be suspicious for him to, uh, not say that he's sort of taking it in a sense or, or that he's he's like well now i'm going to the navy i've always wanted to go to the navy and i never even wanted to fucking be here and now that he's dead especially if he killed him i mean if he didn't kill him he might as well just go to the fucking navy um that's probably a good point maybe it's, uh, it's still subjective or what circumstantial very much but um if no involvement then go to Navy with a clear conscience, in a sense. He might feel, you know, responsibility for... This is why circumstantial evidence fucking sucks. He might have felt responsibility. But he knew that... Um, because he didn't know someone killed... If he, if he didn't kill him, he didn't know someone killed him. And therefore, he would have had no real reason to stay there. He knew that the uh, Mr. Douche is going to take over and he's going to be good and everything. He doesn't even want to be there. So that's... Everything's just weird. Um, so we're missing something. Albert is not very good at botany. It is doubtful that he could have learned how the plants might have released their deadly spores. Albert had the biological knowledge to stimulate the deadly plants. He didn't have the biological knowledge, but it, it's, it was, you know, in a sense, it's not really that complicated. Although, yes, it, if, if you just see plants, yes, it is. For, for us, it wasn't complicated because we had three plants. 
for him it was so he's he's not gonna do that kind of shit at the moment please continue the investigation yeah so this sort of just ruins everything so I think we're on the on the right track but it's it's just so strange Let's go to Scotland Yard. Shall we go to Scotland Yard? Are you fucking Watson, man? I feel certain. And I went the right way, which is just miraculous. Absolutely stunning. So I feel like there's more to come. Especially there's there's more clues to come and stuff. And I, I feel like I like something is definitely missing. Oh, there's the map. Let's look at the map. So, Mr. Douche is here, or wherever. He's following him around. He sees him go into a small area to do a rushed inspection, and he locks the door. Runs all the way over here. Starts the ventilation system blind. And... <clears throat> The caterpillars are there. Things just don't add up, really, in that sense. And then he's done it. He runs in here. He goes here. And then he says, well, does he need to go here? He went through the seed house at, at some point. That's what she said. That's what she said. Mrs. White. Miss White said... Rush on through the back door. There we go. And then he goes through and goes over here to just observe it. Uh, this is an important thing which we need to actually check right now. So the timeline of he said, she said. Can I? No, it's slower. Okay. So we'll go all the way to the end, and then we're going to go back a little bit. Um, so, can you tell me if you saw Mr. Montague Dunn on the day of his death? So, he met him and went, went to see Albert, and Albert said, yeah, quite calm. After paying multiple visits to Albert, I had a little talk with Miss White and then returned to my desk to complete some paperwork. So Miss White said that um, let's start. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his murder? Uh, I can, but there is nothing very special to it. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. T Tuesday is the day of his weekly visit. It was supposed to be at 9, but he was 10 minutes late, as usual. So they sort of know what, he's, what time he's going. Uh, so his weekly visit, they know this. They know he comes in, he rushes, so they they can sort of time the whole thing. Except he's ten minutes late, late, but it's usual for him to be at least late and probably ten minutes late. Uh, he he came in uh, to say good morning, then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. Can she see there? I don't remember. After that, he ran out in the direction of the nursery where Mr. Hamish was working. Uh, he was always in a rush during the inspection. I would pity anyone who stood in his way. And that was the last time you saw him. Yes, yeah, so I stayed in the laboratory uh, at 1040 when I heard the cries of Albert and Mr. Hamish from the gl large glass house. 
Cries of Albert and Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined him as soon as I could, for I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment. So she was in the laboratory back there. Right, so the laboratory is, is far away. And didn't he just say that he went to see him, see her in the laboratory? Because that's what I was. Because I was thinking she was over in her, uh, you know, this this area where she is now. But she was in the laboratory, which is far away. So I met him, and then had a little talk with Miss White, and then I returned. She she didn't say that he actually did that. They did have a, any talk. And it's only I observed Mr. Dunn not feeling well, so I ran immediately to fetch Albert. Um, so he ran from the... Uh, from here he saw it, and he ran this direction in front of here, here where... Because... He's not going to be here, the sun. I mean, Albert's not going to be here. So here, and then they went in, and commotion, and then she comes in. So she might not see... Is there a window directly to the door there? All right, whoops, wrong button. No, right button. So we can't see through the windows, but we need to assume that, you know, they can. So there's a door. She was recording here. And she didn't see him run through here to uh, see Albert. So he didn't come through here, I would imagine. It's possible she missed it, but, you know, I, I don't... You can't miss... Maybe you can. So... I only stopped my work once when Mr. Hamish visited me briefly, around, briefly at around 10. So, so they were already in there, which means that, um, well, Hamish is lying, but I feel like we're getting here as well. Like he's probably sad, but all right, well, Mr. Douche, Mr. Douche didn't care. that um, Albert was sad because they both killed him. Um, and I am hypothesizing here. If he had if he had worked alone, he would probably show a little bit more empathy about the whole situation in the sense. But they both killed him and now he's sort of crying and everything. Um, and everything sort of, everything keeps rolling. And he's sort of, I don't know, jealous about it. Like some of that doesn't make sense, but still locking the door is, well, hold on a minute. Hold, hold on a second here. Where is the the best place, the only place he had to be was in the in his own office, Mr. Douche. Mr. Uh, what's his face? Hamish. So let's see what uh, what Douche Jr. said. I don't care about their names anymore. So we're gonna see what he said and then just see um, with what lines up. Um, so here it is. He was working in the seed house. Seed house. 
that is um, I'm just gonna go to the map again because I, I really want to make sure that everything is proper here so he's going he's working in the seed house and he didn't have any reason to be in the seed house and he said that he didn't go around the houses when we were asked about you know deaths and everything um, so there's a lot of shit that that's pointing to him as well uh, Wash the gloves and overalls, clean the storage shed tools. I mean, scrub the toilets. What is in the seed house again? It's her, right? She's in the seed house, so. Another sailor. So he was in the seed house. Why? He's already sort of lying here. He doesn't know how to take care of any plants. Um, he came to visit here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about it. Like where? In the seed house? Because, oh yeah, because she was in the lab laboratories. I keep confusing that. Um, Yes, he came here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about it. They had stepped out. Perhaps 9.40. Ten minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room while Mr. Hamish returned here into the seed house. And Mr. Hamish and Miss White, what were they both doing? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from talking with Miss White. That was about 10 past 10 then he ran back here to tell then he ran back here to me to tell me that my father was feeling unwell we hurried across to the water lily room and i found my father lying dead on the floor oh my god so yeah the the positioning was wrong in my mind so he was he said that he's at the seed house so fine so he actually ru didn't run past here he ran past here so um, she's here, Ms. White is here, Mr. Douche is here, and the sun is here. So the windows open, windows closed, we don't know, and he's working on some, I don't know, taking care of plants. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, I don't know why he's there. Um, he, he's not even supposed to be there, I guess. But he sees that he's not unwell. The fastest fastest way, I guess, would be through here and not through here. Um, also, the seed house has the other fan, but it doesn't matter because the only fan that needed to be started at the time was here. Um, so everything else could be running. And then they go through here and I would I would probably tell someone if I, if I was in a rush and someone was feeling unwell would probably take them with me to you know get some extra help and then or just run there by myself and shout to the person I don't know but then go here and the door is fucked and he's out and everything so this would mean that We'll go all the way here and then the commotion started and then she joined in on the fun of death. Interesting. All right. Locking the door. Hold the door. He is guilty at least, but we'll, we'll see what he has to say. So we're going to go to Scotland Yard. The plot thickens. Destroyed.
Inspector, I believe that Martin Hamish is guilty of the murder of Montague Dunn. Aha! I knew it! I'll send the lads around to arrest him. Very good. I shall wait to hear from you. Inspector, I came here as quickly as I could. Martin Hamish is in the large glass house. There's no need to hurry. <clears throat> Where's the rest of the gang? <laughs> What's in his red hair? Brown hair? Holmes, my God! Yes, we found him like that. Our messing around with the ventilation system didn't go unnoticed. Mr. Hamish realized that we knew. Inspector, could you arrange the body, please? I should like to examine it. Holy shit. I mean, I had a feeling because things were going rather strangely. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Oh, Holmes, his left shoe is unique. This anomaly is often a characteristic of... A club foot. Bravo, Watson. That is the key element of this case. Yeah, uh, I don't know exactly what a club foot, club foot is. However, I would imagine it stops him from running around like a madman. The mark around the neck is very visible. He died instantly. Life has become a living hell. I find it unbearable. Dunn deserved to die, but I cannot forgive myself for having his blood upon my hands. We Hamishes seem to have always fallen victim to our circumstance, and I find myself to be no exception. I must atone, and I shall do so here and now. Farewell. Fair enough, but not really. Now... Uh, oh, there it is. Martin Hamish was unable to run due to the tibial torsion of his club foot. Therefore, we should find out if he had sufficient time to lock the door of the colonial collection room and, com and activate the ventilation system. Did he have an accomplice? Discuss with Lestrade the possible impact of new clues found on the body of Martin Hamish. Talk to Lestrade. Now, I don't... I guess I should talk to him. I was thinking I should, I'm not going to be able to do the experiment myself, but I already think that he, he, he wasn't, he, he couldn't have done it even before, but now it's even more unlikely. Excuse me, Watson. Something about this rings very oddly. Why do you say that, Mr. Holmes? Why? Because of Mr. Hamish's club foot. Oh, I deserve to be kicked from here to Charing Cross. I should have noticed it. But Mr. Holmes, I can't see why. No, I don't suppose you do. You must recall that Mr. Dunn was locked inside the Colonial Collection Room by the murderer. If it was Mr. Hamish, he would have had to run up to his workplace to trigger the fan situated above it, taking into consideration the condition of his foot. Well, it is still possible. Perhaps, but it is rather strange that such a person as Mr. Hamish decided to base his plan on the speed of his gait. 
You mean to say that somebody helped him? So the suicide is questionable? Correct. Mr. Hamish accuses only himself in his letter, and so the investigation stops. Possibly an accomplice, then? That idea had not occurred to me, Mr. Holmes. I have another idea, Inspector. Thanks to the testimony that we have collected, we are able to rebuild the events as they took place that day. With a timeline, such as we did in the Jack the Ripper case. Precisely. Callbacks. The map at the entrance of Kew Gardens should help us with our timeline. Let us analyze the facts and statements so that we may recreate the events of that morning. Okay. Uh, Albert meets Montague Dunn and Martin Hamish at the Seed House. Oh, we can't look at... Oh, shit. Do I have to remember that? What the fuck? S to map. Laboratoire. Do I have to fucking remember that shit? God damn it. Oh, there. So they meet up. Um, Mar uh, Martin Hamish returns to the seed house. I'll put it somewhere around here for now. Montague Dunn and Hamish go out into the backyard. Into the what yard? I'll just put them down for now. Miss White is uh, is talking with Martin Hamish in the laboratory. Um, Albert saw Hamish returning from uh, visiting Miss White. Um, this happened, I guess, like right after that. Montague Dunn is in the dry tropics room. I'll put it around there. And then he's dead. And I think there's an equal amount of these. Something something happens at the same time as something else. Martin Hamish returns after talking with Miss White. Returns where? Into his abode. Miss White joins Hamish and Albert at the Water Lily Greenhouse. So this is the last one. And I mean, I mean, I guess this could happen at the same time. All right. So Albert meets uh, Montague Dunn and Martin Hamish at the Seed House. Uh, and through all this time, Miss White is in the laboratory. Um, Montague Dunn and Hamish go into the backyard. I don't know, I mean the backyard where the the very, I guess, northern top, the top away from the entrance. And then, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll play the events now and just see where, where the error is. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, or is, what is this giving me? So Martin, uh, Hamish and Montague, I guess this is what was, this gives me what I need to remember. Martin Hamish and Montague Dunn went to meet Albert in the seed house at around half past nine. So Albert meets Montague Dunn and Martin in uh, half past nine. It was around 20 minutes to 10 when Hamish uh, and Montague Dunn went out to the backyard. After 10 minutes, Dunn rec recommended his inspection and entered the dry tropics room. Uh, Dry Tropics Room. Hamish returned to the Seed House. Those happen at the same time. 
Martin Hamish had a conversation with Miss White at 10 o'clock in the laboratory until 10.40 when he saw Hamish and Albert in the water lily greenhouse and joined them there. Uh, Hamish ran to Albert as soon as he observed that Montague Dunn was unwell, which was at around 10.30. Uh, returns after. So the what? Hamish ran to Albert as soon as he observed that Montague Dunsley, which was around ten thirty. So he ran to Albert. Where is that option? Albert saw Hamish returning from. Where is that option? Or whatever. Albert was in the seed house the entire morning. He observed Hamish returning from visiting Miss White at 10 minutes past 10. So he observed Hamish returning 10 past 10. Miss White is talking with Martin Hamish in the laboratory, so. Um, first they're in the seed house, everybody's in the seed house, basically, except for her. They got into the backyard. Um, he returns to the seed house and Montague Dunn, oh, or this is probably the wrong one, so. So Hamish ran to Albert as soon as he observed that Montague Dunn was on wall, which was at around 10.30. Oh shit, it can't be there. So I'll put that around there and this one around here. Um, Martin Hamish had a conversation with, with Miss White at around 10 o'clock. Miss White was in the laboratory until 10.30, so this one goes here. Uh, Martin Hamish returns after talking with Miss White. I guess there then. Albert saw Hamish returning from Miss White. So that now it sort of makes sense, so we'll see what happens. No, that was wrong. Was it? Yeah, what? So uh, I'm having trouble sort of. Uh, understanding so one thing you've done is in the dry tropics room okay so that's what wait isn't he is he not it was around 20 minutes i don't know why this is so hard i think i'm because i'm i'm sort of focusing on not putting out dead air <laughs> so i i sort of think and read and stuff at the same time but it was around uh, 20 minutes to 10 when Hamish and Montague Dunn went out to the backyard. After 10 minutes, Dunn recommended his inspection and entered the dry tropics room. Hamish returned to the seed house. Right, so this is wrong, right? I had it right before. Martin Hamish had a conversation with Miss White at 10 o'clock. So he goes back to the uh, laboratory. Miss White was seen in the laboratory. Right. Hamish ran to Albert as soon as he observed that Montague Dunn was unwell. Hamish uh, ran to Albert as soon as he saw that he was unwell. So. Yeah, but what? Hamish ran to Albert as soon as he observed that Montague Dunn was unwell. So he returned to him. It's around 10.30. So is, is this just the thingy? Uh, Martin Hamish returns after talking with Miss White. This seems like the same thing. So I'll just play the events because I'm sort of having trouble with the notions of what's going on. Um, 
Right, so this one is wrong because, oh, no, because it, like, <laughs> it's the same thing. Sort of brute forcing it now, but there's nothing here. Oh, all right. So he here. I guess he returns into his um, wherever the fuck he was. Albert was uh, was in the seed house the entire morning. He observed Hamish returning from visiting Miss White ten minutes past ten. Right. Okay. <laughs> No. Oh, no. Albert was seen in the seed house the entire was in the seed house house the entire morning. He observed Hamish returning from visiting Miss White at ten minutes past ten. Oh, it, Jesus Christ! But why did he? What? When Hamish returns to the seed house at around ten ten. Uh, Martin Hamish returns after talking to Miss White. They're talking here. It's the same thing. I don't understand this. I'm not giving it enough time, but... Uh, <laughs> dead air is bad. So, 20 minutes to 10... After 10 minutes, Don recommended, recommend, recommenced, not recommended, recommenced his inspection and entered the dry tropics room. Hamish returned to the seed house. Right, so what, what? This is so fucking annoying right now. Martin Hamish returns to the seed house. That's right, that's correct. Why is this wrong? Martin Hamish returns after talking with Miss White. Albert was in the seed house the entire morning. He observed Hamish return from visiting Miss White at 10 minutes past 10. This is 10 minutes past 10. Like everything is fine and now it's an error because Something else happens at the same time. Oh, shit, no. Is this one the... Like, Albert saw Hamish return. Oh my god, is that it? <laughs> of course. <sighs> no, nothing happens here, but it, it's... Uh, he feels unwell, and then... Or it's poison, and then they all hang out there, right? Yeah, it would be sort of easier for me to comprehend this if I could write this down myself and then use it from like pre existing examples. It's weird. Let us summarize Montague Dunn was poisoned inside the colonial collection room, he forced open the door which means that someone locked him inside there at 10.20. Martin Hamish was last seen at 10.10. This means that he has approximately 10 minutes to lock the door of the colonial collection room. Given that he was club-footed, it is doubtful. Albert also has 10 minutes to lock the door of the colonial collection room, which is quite enough time. Miss White was last seen at 10 o'clock which means that she had approximately 20 minutes to lock the door. More than enough time. Perfect, Watson. Now, let us ascertain who assisted Martin Hamish in killing Montague Dunn. I mean, I'm going to feel like an idiot if, uh, if I'm wrong about this. What? Oh, I didn't, don't even have to, I'll read it. <laughs> Miss White had 20 minutes, uh, it would have been enough 
enough to trap Montague Dunn, she could have locked the door and alerted Martin Hamish to activate the ventilator system. Uh, Martin Hamish and Miss White are not accomplices. It is unlikely that White would have had the opportunity and 20 minutes would have not been enough to lock the door of the colonial collection. I mean, it would have been enough time. The opportunity is unlikely though, but we'll see. We'll put the other ones together. Martin Hamish and Albert are not accomplices. It is unlikely that Albert would have had the opportunity and 10 minutes would have not been enough to lock the door of the colonial collection room. Albert was Martin Hamish's accomplice. 10 minutes would have been enough for him to uh, follow Montague Dunn and lock the door uh, in order that Martin might activate the ventilation system. So I guess this is going to be the conclusion episode. It's going to be really long. Well, not, not that long, but still. Um, we're just going to click this because uh, if it's not this, then I'm just going to feel like an idiot. Um, but I feel like an idiot right now. So if, if I want to avoid it or make it go away short, uh, in a shorter amount of time, I should just click this. But um, I think I can't see a reason for... I can't see a reason for White doing it, basically. They had an argument, they had like a, they were, you know, break up or whatever, but... Oh, she... They're, oh my god, now I'm starting to think about it. Okay, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna leave this here, which is sort of dumb, but I'll upload the uh, next video on the same day as this one, hopefully, so... Um, I'll, I'll give it a little bit of thought and then uh, we'll come back with a conclusion.